Well, it's gone just like that, but it has been 14 months now since I first installed iTech World's 120X lithium battery under the bonnet of my Land Cruiser. The iTech World brand is becoming more and more popular as many people realize that you don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a top of the line system to get into the realm of lithium. This being said, 14 months on only means one thing, time to test and review. Firstly, to avoid any disappointment, I will tell you straight away that we are not cutting open this battery and looking at the internal components. This battery personally cost me $1,000 and cutting it open will not only void any warranty or service agreements, but also destroy a battery that is still working. Now YouTube does bring in a little bit of income, but not enough to cover the expenses of the channel as we stand, let alone cutting and destroying perfectly good products. If you wanna have a look at the inside of one of these batteries, may I suggest that maybe you buy the product yourself and let us know how it looks. What I will be doing, however, is telling you how I've used the battery in the 12 months that it was installed in the Land Cruiser. I'll be giving you an idea of my impressions, my thoughts, the physical condition of the battery, and of course, we'll be testing its current capacity. Now the battery is 14 months old, but it should be noted it has been in storage for the last two months. It was taken out of the cruiser almost exactly 12 months after being installed. So before we start the review, I think it's important to know how I've used this battery and what types of conditions in the last 12 months. I spoke about some of the trips I completed in my first six months in the six month review, but this included several local weekend trips, visits to my four wheel drive park, and of course the infamous three week trip through the remote Pilbara region of Western Australia. This particular trip had it all, water crossings, corrugations, four wheel driving, and dormant days where twin fridges and battery packs were charged from it, resulting in complete discharges. Since this six month review, we've done plenty more weekend trips. We've also crossed the Nullarbor three times in the space of five weeks, but by far the biggest change and the most demand we placed on this battery was between months nine and 12, where we were full time living on the road with our vehicle and camper. This means that this battery here was getting used, discharged and charged every single day. Sometimes it was only powering the 65 litre fridge set to three degrees and a couple of cameras, but more often than not, in addition to that, we were recharging laptops, cameras, drones, RC cars, electric skateboards, and even the new 12 volt oven, which is used a whole lot more than I initially thought. We also have all of our lights connected to this battery. That includes the spotlights while we drive, the 26 inch light bars on the roof rack, the camping lights on the side and the rear, and of course the underbody lights. I also have a 1000 watt inverter that is used daily, and this provides high currents at 240 volt for things like one of my drones and the MacBook Pro. We use a 12 volt water pump in the vehicle that provides drinking and washing water daily. What I'm getting at here is we really do push this electrical system in the cruiser every single day. Now normally we do fully recharge every day, whether that be from driving the vehicle or from solar when we're sitting around at camp. But if we have a look at some of our Victron gear, we can see that our average depth of discharge is 77 amp hours. So if we compare that from our six month old capacity test of 97 amp hours, we are discharging this battery by almost 80% every day. Now the battery is constantly working with this new lifestyle in a variety of different conditions. We've also experienced several climate conditions on our trip so far, and that includes 37 degree days in the Flinders Ranges, all the way down to two degrees overnight in the Vic High Country. We've driven through dusty, hot outback tracks and through snow at high altitudes. All in all, this battery has been used and abused in the last 12 months and sure hasn't been placed into a weekend warrior. Aside from running high powered appliances like hair dryers and induction cooktops, there's not much more you could want or demand from a lithium battery setup. Let's get into the physical condition of this battery. It hasn't changed a whole lot since my six monthly review. In that episode, I brought attention to the warped top orange cap and I still maintain that this is due to an over tightening of the battery bracket which sits on top. As mentioned in that episode, the battery was taken in and out by many shops. In fact, one shop that did some work on the cruiser and removed and reinstalled the battery actually used little sections of fuel hose to add more pressure on the casing. This has increased that amount of warping. It goes to note with a battery that's this light, weighing in at only 10 kilos, you don't need that much pressure to secure it in place. Now in that last episode, I was a bit worried that we had compromised the IP67 waterproof rating with this warp here and it may go on to cause some further issues. I also said this, cap, so I might just place a little bit of sealant in this gap here before placing it in just to ensure that no moisture or any other element gets into the battery. I will admit that I didn't end up sealing the cap at all with any type of sealant. I decided that I wanted to see how it would perform if I didn't pick up on the issue at all. 
and so far, no dramas. This being said, the terminals and lower plastic housing are still in good condition, with no signs of corrosion, fracturing or cracking. Now, I wrapped the battery in a heat shield material, which consists of a foil exterior and an adhesive foam on the inside. I did mention that in my last review that I had water soaking and remaining in that foam material. When I reapplied the material after that review, I did not line the bottom, and this appears to have helped the water to drain from the foam and remain dry. There is no visible damage that has been noted in or around the area of the engine bay where the battery is located in the Land Cruiser. Of course, moving on to the capacity test, and this is the segment that gets the most attention from potential buyers. How much power a battery can hold and how much of that power is readily accessible is an important consideration when spending this much money on a lithium setup. 12 months ago, we established that a brand new, I received a total of 99 amp hours capacity. Six months ago, I did the exact same test again and we received a total of 97 amp hours, a 2% decrease, and today we plan on doing that test again. Using the exact same battery discharge tester, we set a constant draw to 10 amp, which is a reasonable and common discharge rate for most camping or vehicle related activities. So that battery tester is powered up from an independent AC source. It will give us a true accurate reading of the usable capacity. We also set the cutoff voltage to 7.5 volt, which is about one volt lower than the internal BMS. And that's just in case it fails, which it hasn't yet. Starting the test, we now wait the 10 or so hours to completely drain that battery. Comparing the results, we see an expected and typical voltage level from a lithium battery. This shows that the voltage remained in the high to mid 12 volts for the majority of the test and dropped off suddenly at the end when reaching its full capacity. Overlaying these results with our previous tests, we can see similar patterns that confirms that this battery is still performing as expected and as it should, even after 12 months of use. More importantly, the amp hour capacity. This battery took a total of 9 hours and 19 minutes to draw down, providing us with a respectable 93.2 amp hour of usable capacity. Again, this is very similar to my previous test from brand new and 6 months ago. Although the capacity has diminished somewhat in the last 12 months, this is to be expected. Now, lithium batteries are a high performing and resilient battery, but there is no doubt they are still suffer from a little bit of cycle life degradation when subjected to repetitive and hard wearing use. A total loss of 7% in 12 months is to be expected, but it's still much better than the old AGM which only provided me with 74 amp hours. So I've been really happy with how the battery's performed on a day-to-day -day use basis and also how it's held its capacity over the last 12 months, but what about recharging it back up again? Now I don't use any methods to specifically test the charging rates on the lithium battery. Since being on the road, the 120X has only been charged and managed through the Red Arc BCDC 1240D charger mounted to the Land Cruiser. This charger will generally put in about 33 to 35 amps at any one time, and the 120X accepts this with no problems. I have two options for solar charging, the first being the 100 watt permanently mounted fixed solar panel on the roof rack. This provides about 4 amp of charge whenever solar is available. And secondly, I also use an array of Bluetti PV 200 watt panels. A single unit provides about 11 amp in good condition and all three wired together in parallel can provide up to 35 amp on perfect conditions. Now, although I haven't specifically tested the charging rates, I can say that I've had no dramas with either solar or alternate charge into the 120X. I've spoken previously about some of the advantages of using a lithium battery over the more traditional chemistries like gel, lead acid, and AGM. But in the last 12 months of using this particular setup, have those lists changed? Some of the pros and advantages that I've been getting out of this lithium setup is obviously a much higher performance in terms of its peak charge and discharge rates. I've been getting a much better capacity, a higher or usable voltage throughout its entire range, better cycle life, and of course, a much lighter unit. Now, although capacity is probably the most talked about and the most debated point on these lithium setups, it's the high performance in terms of its discharge rates and the usable voltage under load that has really highlighted the benefits for lithium for my needs. I could be powering my 12 volt oven, pulling 10 amp, drone batteries, MacBook Pro, and all a bunch of USB accessories at the same time. And when that compressor for the fridge kicks in, we're pulling up to about 35 amp of power. The voltage is still nice and high and everything runs exactly as it should. 
but if you were using say an old AGM like I had previously, the voltage would be dropping down to the low 12 volts, maybe even the high 11 volts. And this is when voltage sensitive equipment is going to be shutting off to protect the battery and also the electrical componentry. This just doesn't happen with lithium. And the fact that it's 20 kilos lighter than my previous setup is a huge bonus. Now the cons or disadvantages haven't really changed in the 12 months either. We still have the high initial setup cost and the restarting procedures. Now although I paid $1,000 for this battery about 14 months ago, we can already see that because of the much more populated market and the advancements in technologies, that, that price has dropped down to $849 as it stands today in April 2023. So we see the prices are coming down and they're becoming more affordable. Now the restart procedures haven't changed much either. If these batteries are completely discharged, the BMS or battery management inside will shut down and turn them off, which means you will need an external 12 volt source to jumpstart them to accept any method of recharging. So all said and done, what are my thoughts and would I recommend this battery to others? Now I certainly can't complain. I've put this battery through a variety of different circumstances and terrains, and I've never rocked up to camp with a warm fridge. I've been able to curb some of my weight issues by losing 20 kilos by switching from AGM and retained full storage in the back of the cruiser by having the battery mounted up here in the engine bay. I've driven plenty of corrugations and through a lot of hot climates and this battery has never cut out. It is a true drop-in replacement with a very minor change required on the Red Arc charger to push that lithium charging mode. So would I recommend this battery to others? And the simple answer is absolutely. It represents great value for money. It may not have all the bells and whistles like Bluetooth connectivity like some of the other brands do, but it works as it's designed to do and it's been reliable for me. And it comes in at a fraction of the costs of other companies. Now there are plenty of other manufacturers out there on the market that do offer these budget lithiums, but very few of them have Australian distributors or stores or people you can speak with for warranty processes and very few, if any, are warranted for under bonnet use. This iTech World 120X is a budget lithium battery, but it is warranted for under bonnet use in your four wheel drive. And so far for me, it's been working exactly as it's designed to and provided high performance, great capacity and resilience to hard use. So what else could I ask for? I thank you for watching this video. I hope it's provided some useful information in determining whether or not a battery like this, whether it be iTech World or another brand, is going to be suitable for your setup. But we'll make sure to see you in the next episode of Exploring Oz. Cheers.